A very good evening uh, to all, uh, dear brothers in Christ. <clears throat> we thank our Lord for giving yet another year to prove our faithfulness to Him. So last week we studied about the church, uh, part two, where we studied how uh, one is uh, spiritual begotten, happen place uh, uh, when he dedicates his life to Lord. We have seen that uh, the one uh, who has to uh, go to heaven, he has to be first. Uh, be born in the spirit, <clears throat> then only he can be entering into the kingdom of God. Because uh, uh, born in the spirit uh, means, uh, uh, we have studied last week, uh, it doesn't uh, happen as soon as we uh, take immersion in water. It actually uh, begins from there. There is a place that where uh, bigotal actually happens and the born happens uh, uh, at the end of our course, that is at our death. So, only after death, uh, one will be raised in a spiritual body, uh, born uh, in the spirit. Hence, uh, we see in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 4-7, uh, we read last week, it says that uh, we have this treasure in this earthen vessel. So, God has kept the Holy Spirit in this uh, earthly body. So, daily we need to nurture this new creature uh, in God's likeness, uh, with a healthy spiritual food, then only it will be able to overcome all the things in the world and uh, be like Christ. <clears throat> so, uh, it will uh, take uh, some time as a child in the mother's womb, takes some time to get uh, adjusted to all the environment uh, and slowly develop the eating uh, daily good food. So, similarly, it is with a new creature. So, daily they will be quarreling with the old creature and the new creature. The new creature has to overcome the old creature, which is very, very, you see, healthier than the new creature. So these things uh, are the warfare uh, which uh, every Christian has within themselves. Uh, the new will always tends to do Lord's will. But uh, the old uh, man, uh, you see, always tends to do the will and sin against God. So daily there were warfare. So ultimately, when uh, you see, this fight is completely over, only at death, uh, that is the time that uh, they will be resurrected uh, as a spiritual body <clears throat> and uh, be taken to heaven. Why? Why it is so? Uh, because the Bible says that uh, uh, flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. Neither do the corruption inherit uh, incorruption. So, if any man has to go to heaven, it is only with the spiritual body that we can go. So, with this fleshly body, we can't go. So, if we need to go in the spiritual body, first... Uh, the spiritual begetal has to happen and then the spirit birth has to happen at a death uh, at a death of our uh, you see uh, human life uh, that is at the end of our course this is the same way actually jesus went to heaven jesus never went to heaven with the same body physical body you see that physical body he gave as a ransom for uh, adam that uh, he, he died he you see he poured out his soul unto death on the cross so, Jesus went to heaven in the spiritual body. You see? He went to heaven in the spiritual body. So, in the spiritual body only, you see, uh, Jesus was taken to heaven. So, how did uh, Jesus get the spiritual body? It did not happen uh, in one day, dear brethren. So, it happened uh, from the beginning of uh, his course at the baptism, where he was immersed in water. And... Uh, uh, he consecrated uh, his life. Uh, that is the time that he was uh, begotten of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but when was he birthed uh, or born of the Holy Spirit? If you see, it is only at his death. Uh, hence, uh, we see, we saw a lot of examples in last week that uh, when door was locked, uh, Jesus entered inside uh, after his uh, resurrection. So how was it possible? It is only possible as it was a spirit being. So hence, uh, we see uh, different types of Christians. Uh, so last week we studied you see the called group, the chosen group, and the faithful group. So, it is not only called, you see, that is important, but it's the chosen one who is important. But among the chosen, just because uh, we are selected, uh, that is not sufficient, Putran. You see, being faithful to God until our death is very important. So, everybody says, as soon as you believe in Jesus, you shall be saved. That's sufficient. No, no, no. That is the beginning of the salvation. The salvation is a big concept. The first concept is that you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. That is the first step of salvation. You are saved from what? You are saved from Adamic death. But further, what do you need to do? 
you need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling because you are safe from pandemic death but again if you live this god's grace you are going to die in the second death hence uh, proving of faithfulness to god until our death is very very important thing hence <clears throat> you see in the divine plan chart m one group is there uh, were a big group but about that uh, there is a small n group for very small that is a faithful class of people dear brethren so we need to be of the faithful class uh, dear brethren so just not sufficient we be a good believer just not sufficient we be a just uh, a basic follower but we need to be a faithful follower of our lord until our death and this group is being selected from the foundation of the earth even before god laid the foundation for this earth this group is being selected let us read ephesians 1:4 According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yes. See, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. You see, dear brethren, God has chosen this class of people before the foundation of the world. So many people think, uh, brother, the church uh, who all has to go to heaven. This group. You see, they are selected even before the foundation of the world, even before God created this earth. This group is already selected, so no need for us to worry. We are chosen for even before our birth, even when we are conceived, even when we were before. You see, formed in the mother's womb, God has chosen us. Okay, if God has chosen us even before our birth, then why need to worry? Whether we are living as a Christian life, whether we are living as a holy life or not, uh, anyway we are chosen. Anyway, if you sin or if you don't sin, doesn't matter. No, because God has already chosen. So whatever you do, it doesn't matter to God at all, because you are already chosen. So you will definitely be taken to the heaven. Dear brethren, is that what the Bible says? Ah, dear brethren, you see, so many Christians uh, don't read the Bible properly and misunderstand so many verses. Uh, you see. Uh, similarly, the Bible says about Apostle Paul that he was chosen from mother's womb. God had separated him from the mother's womb. So everybody think that Apostle Paul was chosen even before he was born. You see, if Apostle Paul was chosen even before he was born, what does Apostle Paul say? You see, Apostle Paul says in First Corinthians nine twenty seven that I keep my body under. Read, brother. First Corinthians nine twenty seven, brother. Mm. <clears throat> But I keep my body, but I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection, lest that, by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Ah, uh, see, Apostle Paul, you see, he said, "I keep my body under and bring it to subjection. I try to, you see, control it. Why? Because by any means, after preaching to everybody." I myself become a castaway. That means I myself might lose the crown. Dear brethren, Apostle Paul was chosen from mother's womb. He tells, "I might become outcast. I might be rejected by Lord also. If God has chosen him before the foundation of this world, why he should say that I might become a castaway? God can even cast me out. You see, dear brethren." This clearly proves that nobody is chosen from the foundation of the world individually to go to heaven. You see, dear brethren. So, working out our salvation is important. Then, who? Oh, why does the Bible say in Ephesians one four that they are chosen from the foundation of the world? You see, dear brethren. You see, we need to read that verse very carefully. Now, Ashish brother, read that verse very carefully, slowly, loudly, clearly. But I keep under my body. Ephesians one four, brother. Sorry, Ephesians one four. Okay, sorry. According as He had chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Ah, see, God has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. What does it mean? Does it mean that God has chosen individuals? No. It continues to say the important thing that we should be holy. Without blame, 
before him in love. So God has chosen a group of people, not individuals. Does he say individuals? No. Does he say that God has chosen me in him? No. It says God has chosen us. Us means what? A group. A group of people have been chosen even before the foundation of this world was laid. How? Were individuals chosen? No. The character of that group of people were chosen that they should be holy without blame in love. These are the three characters that were selected by God even before the foundation of the world was laid. Not individuals were chosen. You see, same Apostle Paul, you see, gives more clarity in Romans 8.29. Read with the Romans 8.29. For whom he did foreknow, he also pre he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first one among many brethren. You see, God, uh, huh? he foreknow everything. He predestinated a group. It seems, sir. But what did he predestinate? He did he predestinate individuals? Did he select individuals that this, 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 this should be huh? in heaven even before the foundation of the world was laid? No, no. It says that they have to be confirmed to the image of his son. That qualification was fixed even before the foundation of the world was laid. That was even foreknown. That was predestinated before itself. That they should be confirmed to the image of his son, dear brethren. Not individuals were fixed. Imagine, Jesus chose 12 apostles, isn't it? But what happened to Judas? You see, Judas was the one who betrayed the Lord. The Bible says the prophecy was that one of them should betray, but not Judas. You see, it could be anybody. You see, the choice was always between Judas and Peter. Even if Judas was faithful, he could have fallen Peter also. He could have fallen anybody else. But does it mean that just because Judas was chosen an apostle, that his seat is confirmed? No. No, dear brethren. Just because Judas was unfaithful, you see, his position was vacant. And who filled it later? It was filled by Apostle Paul, dear brethren. So here, nobody is predestinated, nobody is fixed to go to heaven. You see, Judas proved his unfaithfulness, so hence Paul was replaced by it. See, I'll give you an example. This is like something like a military selection. For military, if an army is being selected, Huh? How will they select? <clears throat> you see? Huh? They will select uh, particular people with particular height, particular weight, huh? particular chest, particular eyesight, biceps, triceps, everything should be exactly pakka. Isn't it? So, what they would have done is that even before the selection happens, they would have fixed the criteria. This and this qualification has to be this should be the biceps, this should be the triceps, this should be the chest, eyesight, height, weight, everything should be this one only. Then only they are selected. They won't fix individuals before itself. The qualifications for the individuals are fixed, but not the individuals. Whoever has that qualification, that it be anybody, he can come into that selection. He can fall into the selection, he can come from the selection. But only thing, he has to have that particular character, particular quality and qualifications, you see, already prefixed. This is what God has prefixed, not the individuals. Like for example, dear brethren, God chose the high priest in the Old Testament. How did God choose the high priest? You see, they were not chosen for many particular, you see, uh, people. They were chosen for a particular group. You see, that is the Levi. And uh, can anybody come? Just because Levi is selected, uh, entire Levi can come. Huh? No. What is the qualification? Even before uh, Levi was selected, the qualifications were fixed. Let us read Leviticus 21, 17 and 18, brother. Leviticus 21st chapter, 17 and 18. <clears throat> Okay. We speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations, 
that at any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever man he be that had a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man or a lame or he that had a flat nose or anything superfluous. See, nobody should be blemished, it seems. This qualification was fixed even before the high priest was anointed. So, anybody who falls in this criteria, you see, you see, without the blemish, they will be sent to the high priest. Dear brethren, so here it gives, he should not be superfluous. That means, none of his body parts should be extra or less. What does it mean? Like, for example, some people will be having a, a flat nose. You see, the four nose won't be proper. They are not eligible. Even some people will be having only one eyes or squint eyes. One and a half. But they also won't be eligible. And some people, they have fingers. Some people have extra fingers. You see, six, six fingers. And six, six uh, fingers or toes also. You see, even those people are not qualified. This is for the little high priest uh, in the Old Testament. Uh. So, body members has to be exactly fixed. You, you can't have one part extra, one part less. Uh. You see, the body parts mentioned by God, created by God, should be exact number why this number was fixed because the antitypical high priest is our lord jesus christ and antitypical high priest body members also the church numbers are also fixed it can be anybody and everybody you see they can come everybody can come anybody can come but there is a fixed qualification there is a fixed body members number also you see does God uh, give us uh, three eyes uh, and four four kidneys uh, and two hearts? Uh, no, everything is fixed. No, not one less, not one extra. So similarly, <clears throat> human body, yeah, yeah, as uh, body members are fixed. Similarly, the church members number is also fixed. And what is the number? That number is one lakh and forty four thousand. <clears throat> okay, where is it given in the Bible? Revelation fourteen one. Read, brother. Revelation 14.1 And I looked, and lo, a lamb stand on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Ah, you see, I looked uh, on Mount Zion. How many people are standing with him, sir? One lakh and forty-four thousand. Upon his head, the father's name returns. So these are the one lakh forty-four thousand. You see, again, the one lakh forty-four thousand is mentioned in Revelation seven chapter. Also, it comes in two chapters: Revelation seven chapter and Revelation fourteen chapter. Revelation seven four. Please read. And I heard them, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of children of Israel. See, again, one lakh forty-four thousand was sealed, but here. One uh, thing is mentioned that they are sealed from the, all the tribes of children of Israel. So many people think, brother, this is selected from Israel, brother. We have got nothing to do with uh, this one lakh forty four thousand is only from Israel. Oh, -ho. but if you see the same verse is again mentioned in Revelation fourteen chapter, but there you see from where they are selected, it is given there clearly from where they are selected. It is not only from Israel. It is selected from the entire world. Read Revelation 14.3 And this song as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. You see the one like for the, where were they redeemed? From Israel. From the earth. The entire earth. Earth means what? Earth means the entire earth, not one, one portion of the earth. You see, uh, Israel is the smallest of the, all the nations of the entire world. That's what the Bible says, no? You see? But uh, here it says 1,44,000 are chosen. The entire earth means the, all over the world these people are selected. So, this uh, 1,44,000, you see, uh, many people think that uh, brother, it is only Israel. You see? But, uh, yeah, who is Israel? Who is the real Jew as per the Bible? Let us read. The Bible actually speaks about two Israel. Two types of Jewish people. You see? The one is a real Jew. The one is a fake Jew. Now who is a real Jew? You see? 
the one who follows the footsteps of Jesus, they are called the real Jews in the Bible. Oh, no, fake Jews are the people who don't believe in Jesus, sir, but they are fleshly Israel. They don't have faith on our Lord Jesus Christ, but if they are born in Israel, it doesn't make them the real Jew. Read Romans 9, chapter 6 to 8. Not as though the word of God had taken no effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, neither what are because they are the seed of... What, are what, are what is it? Did you observe that? Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. They are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Are are? How can this be? It clearly says, huh? For they are not all Israel who are in Israel, it seems. Sir. How can this possible? All the people who are living in Israel, if they are not called Israel, then what are they called? They are called as Americans. Sir. No, they are Israelites. Only. No, but the Bible says, just because you are born in Israel, just because you are a Israel, doesn't mean that you are a Israel. Then what does it mean? It means for a you to become or me to become an Israel or a Jew, there is a qualification. What is the qualification? Continue with now. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But ah, in see, Isaac... Neither just because you are the seed of Abraham, you are all children. Just because I come from Abraham's lineage doesn't mean that you become a Jew. No, no, no. No, no, no. no it, no, it doesn't say so. We might think, but Bible doesn't say so. You see? Then what? Continue with that. Huh? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Hmm, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Uh -huh. You see? Isaac was a promised seed. No, he was not a natural man. He was born because of promise of God. Similarly, continue. Continue. Huh? That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but hmm. the children of the promise are counted for the seed. See, very clearly it says now, they which are of the children of the flesh, fleshly, in the Abrahamic uh, lineage, Abraham family, one is born, yeah, they are not the children of God, they are not the lack and 44,000, but the children of promise are counted for the seed. Remember the subject of seed? See, Jesus is that body members, we are all the body members. You see? So this seed, this is coming from the people, children of the promise. Read uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 18, brother. Uh. Behold, Israel after the flesh, are they, are not they, which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar? See, Israel after the flesh. Two types of Israel are there. Israel after the flesh. Israel after the spirit. Spiritual Israel. Fleshly Israel. Two types of Israel are there. This is the literal Israel who eat of the sacrifices given in the altar. Literal sacrifice. Literal eating. Literal meat. Literal Israel. Fleshly Israel. Read spiritual Israel in 1 Peter 2.5. Uh. He also has lively stones are built up of a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Mm. Spiritual house, priesthood, spiritual sacrifice. Aha! This is the spiritual house. This is the spiritual Israel. So in the Bible, there are two types of Israel. Fleshly Israel and spiritual Israel. See, Apostle Paul he is writing a letter to the Romans and he is speaking about who is a real Jew. Who is a real Jew? Read Romans 2nd chapter 28 and 29. Brother. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man but of God. See? Who is a Jew? One who is not outwardly. Eh? He is not a Jew. One who is outwardly. Just because he made a circumcision doesn't mean that you make a, you become a Jew. If you want to be a real Jew in sight of God, you need to circumcise the heart. 
That's what Jesus said. If any man wants to be my disciple, deny himself, circumcise your heart. That is the real Jew. So there is a real Jew means fake Jews is also there. That is the fleshly Israel. Real Jews are the spiritual Israel. Read Galatians 3rd chapter 7 and 8 brother. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Hmm. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed. See? Who are called the children of Abraham? Those who are of faith. Those who have faith as Abraham, they are only called as the children of Abraham, dear brethren. Remember what John the Baptist said to the people of Israel. He rebuked them saying, don't think that uh, you are the children of Abraham. God has no other option than to choose you. No, God can raise uh, uh, sons for Abraham from these stones, from these Gentile-like people, dear brethren. Therefore, this uh, spiritual Israel was first selected from the Israel, naturally, Israel as a nation group. You see, the lakh and 44,000 first selected from the fleshly Israel. <laughs> and as they proved unfaithfulness, uh, you see, God moved to the Gentiles. Read Acts 13, 46, brother. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken by spoken to you. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. See, God had first given you the chance, but you have proved unfaithfulness, unworthy. Hence, uh, we are turning to the Gentiles. So God first selected from Israel nation, but as many numbers were not got from the Israel nation, God turned to the Gentiles. Therefore, dear brethren, when we see about 144,000, you see, when we see about the tribe of Israel, the names of the tribe of Israel is given in uh, first time is given in Genesis 49 chapter. And Revelation 7 chapter also is given. You see, each and every tribe, 12,000, 12,000. If you just see the comparison and see the order of Genesis 49 chapter and Revelation chapter is totally different. You see, in Genesis 49 chapter, Dan tribe is present there. But in Revelation, Dan tribe is not there. In Genesis 49 chapter, Manasseh is not there. But in Revelation, Manasseh appears. Why? Manasseh was the son of Joseph. How can he appear? In the 12 tribes of Israel, is there... And in number second chapter, there is also a list of the 12 tribes. There, Dan is mentioned. Joseph is missing. In Revelation, Dan is missing. You see, Joseph is there. In number second chapter, Ephraim is there. Levi are missing. But uh, in Revelation 7 chapter, Ephraim is not there. Levi is present. Now, why these differences? Sir? This clearly proves that he is not speaking about a literal Israel. And moreover, Revelation book is a symbolic book. All the things written there is totally symbolic. So similarly, this is speaking of the spiritual Israel tribe. And okay, now <clears throat> read Revelation 7 chapter. Verse Revelation 7 chapter. Let us see which is the first tribe that comes there. Revelation 7 4 and 5. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed in 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of children of Israel, of the tribe of Judah, were sealed 12,000. Hmm. Judah. See? First tribe that appears is tribe of Judah. Why tribe of Judah is given? Who was the first son of uh, Jacob? Reuben, no? His name should be given, no? But why Judah is given? Uh, think who came from the tribe of Judah? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you see, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hence, uh, his uh, tribe name, Judah, is first given. Then, uh, all the body members. Therefore, dear brethren, here, 
You see, speaking about the spiritual Israel, not a literal Israel. Okay, but as clearly mentioned in Revelation 14 chapter, they were all set up from the, you see, uh, entire earth. Okay, now let us see what are the qualifications are to be of 1,44,000. Revelation 14.4. Revelation 14.4. Hmm. These are they which were not defiled with woman, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whers, with, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from the movement, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. You see? Huh? These were not defiled with women. What is this woman? Some people take this verse literally and don't marry at all. The fathers, uh, bishop, uh, who say, oh, we should be what? Uh, we should not have defiled with the woman, so don't marry. Uh, what does the Bible say? We should not marry. A bishop should be a husband of one wife. The Bible says no clearly. So what is the meaning of woman in the Bible? We should take it out and see. You know the first class, how to study the Bible? Here little, there little. There are 10 methods to understand the Bible. One of the methods is the symbolic language. So in the Bible, woman uh, means not literal woman. Woman in the Bible means the church. Read 2 Corinthians 11 to brother. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Okay. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. The church is engaged to Christ. Now is she is compared to a woman. The church in the Bible is compared to a woman. That's a true church, a virgin. But the Bible speaks also about the false church. And she is called as a prostitute, a whore. Read Revelation 17.5 And upon her forehead was name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of our Lord, and abomination of the earth. Mm. Abomination of the earth, the mother of our Lord. This is the false church. So the church should not be defiled with women. Which, which women? Not the true church. The true church should not be defiled with the false church. You see, we have seen so many studies uh, till now. So many subjects we have seen. Isn't it? The Bible says that the soul dies. What do the people believe? Oh, immortal soul. As soon as a man dies, it goes to hell or heaven. Where does the Bible say? You see, the false church, the true church, there is a difference. Dear brother, oh, hence, you see, the true church should not have any relationship with the false church. They are virgins. Virgins means what? Huh? They never know any man. Literally, some people take this one and think, oh, we should be virgins, we should not marry. Sisters, nuns, they don't marry. No? Because this verse only. They are all totally symbolic. Jesus compared to the church to what? Ten virgins. Remember Matthew 25 chapter? We'll see in detail in next week. And the parable of the ten virgins. Five were foolish. Five were wise. Wise people had the oil. The lamp as well as in the vessel. But the foolish had oil only in the lamp. <clears throat> so these are the virgins means, you see, they are only dedicated and consecrated and engaged to the Lord. They don't mingle with the world here a little, there a little. You see, serving two masters, uh, being faithful to the Lord. That's the reason they say they are virgins. They follow the Lord. You see, withers over, he goes. Uh, what did Jesus say? If any man wants to be a disciple, Deny himself, carry the cross and follow me. These are the faithful followers of Jesus. Faithfully following the footsteps of our master. You see, the master never cared and never read about, uh, you see, uh, contributions, uh, you see, uh, funds, uh, how much amount he can raise uh, and how much uh, big dynasty he can uh, build. He was never worried about offerings and all. His faith was the Lord. Uh, it was his work and he will definitely supply. Uh, you see, the Lord can supply all his needs according to riches in glory. You see, dear brethren, so such was his faith. Freely have you God, freely so you give. You served the Lord freely, dear brethren, and you never charged for anything. So that is the faithful following the footsteps of Jesus. Faithfully sacrificing everything in the path of the truth. You see, faithful unto Dad, this is the followers of Christ, not believers. Not just believers, followers of Christ, followers footsteps of Jesus. 
and uh, it says they were chosen all over the world uh, not only in israel entire globe dear brother these people are selected all over people you see you see india america japan new zealand uh, uh, australia see nepal nepal also got is choosing so these have been gathered from every part of the world uh, and uh, it says revelation 14:4 these are the first fruits uh, what is the meaning of first fruits uh, these are the first fruits who prove faithfulness to god until death these are the first fruits of the god's holy spirit you see whenever god uh, asked the sacrifice in the old testament the sacrifice should have been the first fruits so these are the first fruits of the holy spirit in the gospel age and revelation 14:3 brother read revelation 14:3 uh. And this song is it were a new song before the throne and before the four beast and the elders and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which are redeemed from earth. Ah, it says they sang a new song before the throne and only one lakh forty four thousand could. You see, sing that song. Nobody could sing. They were redeemed from the earth. You see clearly. Even you see no. What is this song which no man can sing? Are they not even Lata Mangeshkar, not even Ya Raman, not even Michael Jackson? So what is this song? You see, everybody thinks this is a literal song. Or nobody knows this song. Only they will be knowing. You see, no. Which is this song? For the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. Here little, there little. Search the scriptures. Any questions from the Bible, the answer should be sought only from the Bible. Read Revelation fifteen three, brother. What is the song? Hmm. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of Lamb, saying, "Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of sins." Ah, you see, they sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. What is the song of Moses? Song and the Lamb. They both have sung the songs. We know it very well. Then uh, how come it says no one can sing only lakh and forty four thousand? What is Moses? What is the song of Lamb? You see, huh? Moses always represents the Old Testament, and song of the Lamb. Jesus represents the New Testament, dear brethren. So the two houses of Israel. You see, Hebrews is given, no? Huh? Two houses of Israel: spiritual house, fleshly Israel. Read Hebrews. Hebrews chapter three, brother, verse five and six. Hebrews third chapter, verse five and six, brother. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope, come unto the end. You see, Moses was faithful over all his house, house of Israel, the Old Testament. You see, and Jesus as a son was faithful. You see, huh? as we, how that house was we, you see, isn't it? That means the New Testament, the Old Testament and New Testament both synchronizing together, beautifully, harmoniously singing the Bible truth to all the people, preaching this word of God. You see, harmoniously, the divine plan synchronizing and uh, beautifully singing pleasantly, so that every hearing here can understand it. Uh, this song, not everybody can sing. This preaching about the divine plan of the ages, uh, synchronizing the entire Bible, not everybody can do it. It can be only done by whom? The lakh and forty-four thousand of them. And Revelation fourteen five, brother. What does he say, brother? Revelation fourteen five, huh? And in their mouth was found no guile, so ah, they are without fault. Ah, see, in their mouth was found no guile, isn't it? And uh, you see, there was no fault in them. What does it mean by guile? They spoke only the truth, not the false. They believed only the truth, not the false. Love, first Corinthians thirty chapter. What does it say? Love rejoices in truth, not in iniquity. You see, dear brethren, that is the uh, purity and the uh, good character of the one lakh forty-four thousand. 
This 1,44,000 is a precious jewel whom God is selecting in this entire world. You see, there is nothing more precious to God than this 1,44,000 who will be faithful to God until the death. Because God knows that's the not everybody can be of that part, but there is going to be a little flock of that part. And they are very, very precious in God's sight. Therefore, what does the Bible say? Psalm 16, 15, brother. Psalm 16, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Mm, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Do you think anything is precious to the Lord? Everything is his creation. He can recreate everything. But this new creation is very precious. Because he can't recreate himself without the help of the new creation. Therefore, dear brethren, this is the lack and 44,000. This lack and 44,000 is not yet complete. The door is still open. We still have the opportunity to go inside. Uh, hence, this call is given to us. That uh, you may be of that part of little flock. Read Romans 11, chapter 25-26. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit. The blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles will come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, they shall come out of Zion, a deliverer, and shall turn away on godliness from Jacob. You see? What does he say? Eh? I don't want you to be ignorant of this one mystery. Israel is blinded. Until when? Until... The balance number of lakh and forty was selected from the Gentiles. Once this one lakh forty was selected from the Gentiles, God's kingdom shall come on earth. Uh, so, still that vacancy is there. Hence, God has given us this calling. So, let us uh, put our all our best efforts, you see, to do the Lord's will and be part of that little flock. May Lord add his blessings to the understanding of his own words.